Hello, this is Barry with Rock with Tiny House Designs. I just wanted to show you how easily you can use SketchUp to make your own designs. So uh, I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. I'm going to call out the keys for the tools as I use them and just follow along. What we're going to start out with is to use R for a rectangle and put a board in on the uh, on the trailer and what we want to do is we went from corner to corner and now we want to use P the push pull tool just raise that thing up and then if you notice over here I'm going to enter in 0.75 which is three quarter inches so that we have a floor board on our trailer. I'm going to use O and orbit over. And now I'm going to put, use the offset tool to um, add the outside walls. So that's F. And so again, we just draw it in and we just punch in six for six inches. And we now have our perimeter walls ready to come up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a couple lines. So all I'm using is the back wall because I don't use layers like I should. And I just build from the inside out. And now what we're going to do is just use the push-pull tool P and raise this up 6.5 feet is what I use for the uh, distance between my floor and ceiling on both levels. Um, what we'll do next is, uh, well, just to let you know, one thing that uh, I just used E, the erase tool, uh, the space bar is your little pointer or selector if you care to select uh, a certain part of the uh, model you can do that and then you can do things like move that whole entire end if you want and then of course we have control z which undoes and control y which will redo uh, your last action so here let's go back now what we're probably going to do now is to Use um, or just draw out some dimensions for the floor. Kind of get a floor plan going here. Over here, we'll just have our bathroom. Usually, in any walk space, I like to have at least or have 32 inches. And so, for now, we'll just go ahead and use that. As you see down here, the the measurement across, if the uh, the width is correct. All we need to do is change the second uh, dimension or measurement. So let's go ahead, just put comma and 32, and there we have the right measurement. We'll go ahead and add a wall. So we hit rectangle, R, put your wall in there, and again, it's the second number. So we're just going to use comma 4.5 for the interior wall. Now we'll go ahead and raise that wall with, with P, the push pull tool, raise that up to uh, the height of the exterior wall. And now we'll orbit uh, to, to be able to see this area that we're going to be working on. One thing that's uh, zooming in with the mouse or Z, you can zoom in. And one thing we're going to do too is to save scenes. Let me show you how to do that. Just click view, go down, and then all you do is add scene. So you can just go back to this scene anytime you want to. I have some other scenes. I actually, you know, we'll just do this. And what we're going to do now is add an entryway into the bathroom. Uh, again, let me just uh, first before. R for rectangle. We're going to make our walkway or standing area. 
for the rest of the, the, the bottom floor, the lower level. So what we have here is the length. Again, the first part is correct. The second measurement will correct with 32 inches. So that didn't work. Let's try that again. All right, comma, three, two, and there we go. And this uh, also is the uh, measurement of the outside tour. And then we're going to do the offset tool, use that, which is F. And we'll make this two. That's just for the trim. We'll go ahead and put in a texture because it's a lot easier if you do it now. You, you save yourself a lot of work. So we'll go over here to some I already have in this model. We'll just uh, uh, use the cherry. Might have to zoom up a little bit for that to work. And then we'll just push, use P and push this through. And now we have the doorway. And as you notice, all the surfaces are uh, have the texture on them. We'll push this down. And then just erase this so that we can have a separate floor between the bathroom and the rest of the lower level. Now we'll uh, continue. Let me just move over here. Maybe we'll think about what, uh, where we want the kitchen, what size kitchen. So I'll get this right here. Using O to orbit and uh, and also going to use H to pan across so that we can see. Maybe we'll back down just a little. And then we'll make another save this scene as well. And now we, let's go ahead and think where, where are we going to put the, uh, the floor for the uh, second level? You know, I think we, we might actually stick it on the end, have a little bit of a change from some of the other models where the, the stairs were between the bathroom and the kitchen. We'll go ahead and put this on the end here. And again, if it's a standing area, we want to go ahead and make that 32 inches wide so we can comfortably stand there or, you know, add a door if we wanted to. So now, in this area, this will be the standing area for the bedroom. And over here, this will be the kitchen area once we add an interior wall. Let's just make sure this measurement over here is correct. And if you look down on the lower right, you will see we have 32 inches across it. So that's good. So here, we'll correct the second part of the measurement again, comma, 4.5. And sure that works. Yep, that's good. So now we can raise this up again to the level of the other walls. Now for kitchen area, there's a lot of standards in, in uh, construction. One is cabinets where they're usually kitchen cabinets are 24 inches deep. So we'll just go ahead and add that in and again adjust the second number comma 24 and since we're here we'll add the upper two usually in a house it uses 30 inch cabinets but we can't use it here because we have a lower ceiling so we'll just use a 24 inch which is also a standard size for cabinets so now We'll add the texture because, again, if we do it now, we'll have less to do later. Raise this up to 36. We'll go ahead and do some other things here. We'll uh, pull this out, measure this to, uh, again, a 24, comma, 24 inches, and pull this out. Use P for the push-pull tool. Bring that out to the edge of that wall. 
and while we're pulling things out, we'll pull this out 12 inches for our wall cabinets and just kind of make that look like it's separate from the wall. We can't even paint it, but it will be covered up so we don't see that part anyhow. All right, on this here, we'll go ahead and do the toe kick. Uh, go from this corner here. Come over here. Usually the toe kick is four inches or three and a half inches tall. So we'll go ahead and let's see if that's right. Yeah, that's right. And we'll go from that edge on the top of that rectangle bring it over here again rectangle is R and let's see if everything's looking right here and then we'll just push that in P for the push uh, uh, pull push push pull tool and just push that in three inches and do the same with this again we just push it in then enter three and it corrects uh, that measurement and we'll just go ahead and since we'll base cabinets are coming out. We'll go ahead and do that with the wall cabinets. Again, uh, adjusting the second measurement to 12 inches and then just push this out a little bit. And now it already is starting to look a little bit like a kitchen. So uh, let's uh, back out, back off a little bit here and see where we are. Just want to check this out, see what this measurement is here. And this probably be where our door is. It's uh, actually not too bad. It's 37 inches there. A lot of times I'll use either a, uh, a rectangle or a line to measure. Because uh, when you use a tape measure, you get a lot of uh, dashed lines through it. And uh, I don't know if you've seen models where those are kind of all over the place. And uh, I think at times they leave a little dot at the end of, uh, of um, the model that you're actually building. And then you have to go back and erase those, or at least I've had to do that in the past. But so anyhow, I use lines and rectangles to measure. All right, so uh, let's uh, start looking at something here. I'm going to Add something like a totem pole on the side here so that uh, it kind of works as a tape measure. Just add it here. We want to um, go ahead and raise this up to the bottom level of the, the floor, lower level floor. And now we'll go ahead and do a uh, Offset F and add another pole in here. Bring that actually up to the top and then extend that up five inches for the thickness of the ceiling over the kitchen. So, here again, that's the second uh, measurement I'm going to adjust. Used uh, R for the rectangle. And then we'll just pull this out so that the, this, is, this should be level. Uh, no, the bottom part is the part that's level. So we can actually raise this up to be the height of the, uh, of this, uh, the top of the ceiling structure or the basically where your bed will be on top of the floor here of that structure, of your ceiling structure. All right, so what we're trying to do, and I don't think I'll have time to do it here, and we'll continue in the next video, where uh, we'll determine where the lower level floor is, because this is really important if you ever build one of these models, that you know this, that varies between the height of your floor on your lower level, if it has a significant effect on your second level floor. So well, I hope you're uh, learning something from this and that I'm not hopping all over the place. And so if you want to hear more or watch more, just catch the next video. Thank you for watching.